You may have heard the term proforestation. This term was coined in 2019 by doctors William Muma and Susan Massino and Edward Faison. And it's a term that sounds really exciting. I mean, who wouldn't want to be pro-forest? I'm pro-forest. What proforestation is defined as is the process of leaving forests alone. And in fact, they, they have this term of, of an intact forest, which is defined as a forest which is free from human intervention. Now, it made me really think about what does it mean for a forest to be intact? If solely being free from human intervention is what makes a forest intact, then in Vermont, we have less than a thousand acres of intact forest. And most of our forests, the balance is these forests, which are 60 to 100 years old, which are really young and simple, missing many of the qualities that once defined them. For me, what it means for a forest to be intact is for it to be diverse and complex and resilient for it to have habitat for the full complement of the, the tens of thousands of native species that comprise this forest community and to be part of a diverse and connected and resilient landscape. The qualities that we're creating here at the Hinesburg Town Forest, whether it's multi-generationality or dead wood, leaving legacy trees, these are the things that will make this forest intact, that will make it diverse and complex, that will make it resilient and adaptive in a changing climate. Whether these qualities were created by natural disturbances or whether they were created by humans is less important to me than the fact that they're here now. When I think about managing a forest, the question I keep asking myself is, how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna manage these forests which are highly altered and which are facing threats and stressors unlike any time in their history? How are we gonna do that while also recognizing that we're in the midst of a climate crisis and a biodiversity crisis? How are we going to do that when we're recognizing also that we humans are here and that we need to consume things to survive, that we know that local renewable resources have global human rights and biodiversity benefits, and that we're always going to consume, we always have, and we always will, and our consumption will always touch ecosystems. What does it mean to love a forest in light of all these things? These are all the things that we need to address at once as we think about what it means to be a compassionate, and responsible steward of our ecosystems. In my mind, the term proforestation has been taken to mean that we should do nothing no matter the cost, when what it should really mean is doing what is necessary to build a better world, even when that means cutting trees, even when that means doing things that make us uncomfortable, even when that means radically redefining what it means to love a forest. What I think is so neat about proforestation is that here are all these people who love forests. And here are all these people who recognize that a forest is not just beautiful because it's a timber farm or it's managed as a commodity, but that there can also be a role on our landscape for forests which are just allowed to manage themselves. And that's incredible. Where I think the message sometimes gets lost is that we think that that means that everything else must be wrong. Like myself, there is this community of conservation organizations, ecologists and foresters and wildlife biologists and all of us have dedicated our lives to answering these really complex questions. What does it mean to love a forest? How do we protect our biodiversity? How do we protect our ecosystems in a changing climate? And the answer to that is a diversity of different solutions. Some of them will be easy, like just not managing a forest. And some of them will be really challenging, like cutting down a beautiful tree, like managing a beautiful forest, changing the way that a forest is. And all of those things are part of the same picture of how we build a better world.